My name is Nonstop Antonio, and we are going to be breaking down Titans Season 4, Episode 10 today. I felt like this episode was a lot of setup for the last two episodes, and I'm very intrigued to see where it goes, because I think it set up some pretty cool stuff for the final. Even though I really do have a love-hate relationship with this show, I do kind of hope it continues after this in the new DCU, because it's possible it could just be another thing in the multiverse and kind of exist on its own. So let's jump into my breakdown for Episode 10 of Titans. Welcome to Nonstop Antonio, where I talk about everything nerdy. I love Marvel, DC, and anime, and if you do too, I hope you enjoy this video. I think the best part of this episode was the Doom Patrol crossing over, even if it wasn't the ones from the same show. However, I was kind of sad that we didn't get, like, Jane or Rita in it, but it was still cool to see Vic, Cliff, and Larry. And it was just a lot of fun seeing them, because they were just kind of messing around in the manor, having a ball of a time, and while all the chaos was happening on Earth. My favorite part of the episode, though, was watching Beast Boy and Cyborg interact. Even if it was for a short time, it made me wanting more. I wish this would lead to Cyborg joining the team, and that's part of the reason why I kind of hope the Titans would continue, is that Cyborg on this Earth, Earth could join the Titans and leave the Doom Patrol, which I think would be perfect because the two actors worked really well together. And you could really tell that both actors were having a great time because they were joking so much and the jokes felt so natural between the two. And like I said at the beginning, a lot of this episode just felt like it was building towards the end, making the Titans also learn that Connor is still on their side. He hasn't gone full evil. He's actually just been playing Sebastian and everyone else to make him look like a mischievous, psychotic Luther. And then we have Sebastian turning full evil, which it looks like he's really snapping this episode, which I think just adds to the kind of development he's gone through the season because he kind of started off as like a skittish dude and just got crazier and crazier and crazier as the season progressed. And I really like what they did this episode, making him really turn full evil and pretty much become brother blood but we'll break this up into sections we'll start with doom patrol because it was my favorite go into the connor sebastian stuff and then go into the dick and rachel stuff like i said in the review section i do kind of wish that rita and jane were there because i think it would have been a fun interaction to see jane react to beast boy we never saw her in the season one but it would have been cool to like kind of get that interaction and also have rita coming back and i'm still happy that we got larry vick and cliff because it was just such a good time even though they're from the titans earth it definitely did feel like this Doom Patrol was the same one we saw on the Doom Patrol show. Which, because it's the same actors, they're still portraying their characters like they normally would. And I really like that part. Really showing that both Doom Patrols aren't so different. However, there are still different key events that happen. Like, on Doom Patrol, Cyborg doesn't have a cybernetics. But on Titans, he does. After last episode, I thought Cyborg had already met Beast Boy. But it, I guess he just knew his name. Because this was their first interaction. And Cyborg kind of seemed like a little off. Because... Beast Boy seemingly put them in this jungle manner, but then they had a lot of fun joking around during the episode, and you can really see that Ryan Potter and Jovian Wade were having such a fun time joking back and forth, and they've been pushing for Cyborg and Beast Boy to meet for so goddamn long. I love that they finally got the chance to do a little crossover there. The one thing I was surprised about, though, is that this is the red. Like, I'm surprised he brought the Doom Patrol and Cory later into it, or I'm guessing he brought the Doom Patrol into it because it was his family. Because he wanted to go home. And the Doom Patrol probably just kind of walked into a room and they just ended up in another section of their house filled with vines and nature. Like Corey did when she was walking through Star Labs and just walked into the red. And it was hilarious when Corey did walk in because she decked Cyborg because she thought he was a threat. I just thought that was a little fun moment First time meeting, and she just stacks him and knocks him down. And I thought it was pretty interesting how they set up Corey as well. She goes into the red to come to terms with the fact that she didn't kill Sebastian, and she feels all the guilt for everything that's happening. She feels like she failed, that she's caused all this death. However, that's not the case. She just needs to move past it and move forward and just learn to protect the world she loves, rather than trying to be driven by hate, be driven by the love for the planet she lives on. And it was great to see Gar coming to terms with his loss and everything that Niles did, making him a stronger hero and a stronger protector of the red. And Cliff was hilarious this episode. He was so vulgar, like he always is in the Doom Patrol show, and it just felt like the same character. It didn't feel like this was a different one, which I think Brendan Fraser did a good job playing the same character. And it was hilarious that he drew a line at the mom jokes. Like, he's making these hor horrible jokes throughout the whole episode, and then Cyborg makes a joke about Beast Boy's mom. He's like, no, we don't do that, which I think was just a really fun moment together. And I like how near the end, when they're about to escape the red, Beast Boy goes up to a book and is like, maybe the red left a message in here for me. But Cyborg turns around and says, I read that already. It says we're trapped here because of you, which was just a fun moment between the characters. And it made me really, really want them together. I would love for them to team up on the Titans. They worked so well. The chemistry was there. We need more Cyborg on Titans. Like we need it. Let's go to the Connor and Sebastian stuff now, because that was pretty interesting on itself. I totally thought that Connor had gone full evil. Joshua Orpin did a fantastic 
job portraying that psychotic Superboy, especially because it was all an act. It felt like it was real. It felt like Superboy was turning into Lex Luthor. He was turning evil because he's even calling himself Connor Luthor and taking over LexCorp. However, he's trying to make LexCorp more of like a thing for good. He's talking about ending poverty and starvation, which is a good thing to do. And I love how he manipulates Sebastian, tries to get him away from Mother Mayhem, being like, you don't need her. She's just using you. She's just trying to summon Trigon and she's going to forget you after that. And then that leads to Sebastian burning her alive, which I totally did not see coming. She's telling him that he's powerless without Trigon and she just manages to make him snap and he burns her. But she came back to life at the end of the episode because I guess Trigon is not done with her just yet. I also really liked during this episode whilst Sebastian had put his magic in the app that he made to make everyone addicted and then turn them into sacrifices. How Connor was still there to be the hero. He was only helping Sebastian so that he could destroy the horn. However, that didn't end up working. And I like how during this, Dick still believes in his friend. He knows that Connor's pulling an angle on Sebastian, that something else is going on. But then Tim is like, yeah, no, that's not what's going on. He's actually betrayed all of us. But Tim doesn't know Connor like Dick does. And I like how they played that. And like I said, Connor did try to destroy the horn of Trigon. However, it didn't work. And then afterwards, after Connor realized Sebastian was sacrificing people and killing people around the world to use as pawns for his power, he realized he had to stop that giving tim access to lexcorp's computers so he could shut it all down and i really like because tim's like oh they wouldn't leave a back door open but in that instant connor opened it up and tim was able to get in and then dick confirmed that connor did it afterwards to help them which shows that connor is still on their side and i love during this too because when connor found out that sebastian was sacrificing people his voice changed it went from that kind of like more serious tone to his normal tone showing that he's not gone full evil and i really like how they portrayed his character this episode really showing that connor is still a good guy and the dick and rachel stuff was interesting i feel like it wasn't really needed in this episode they probably could have taken sebastian down without that explainer saying that the connection was only while they're in that realm however i guess they just wanted to add something into it to make sebastian feel like their connection was gone which again just felt really weird i don't think they really needed that it was kind of cool to get a constantine reference i mean he didn't say his name directly but he said my british friend and i'm pretty sure that's constantine and they also set up too that they're going to be using black magic to separate Rachel from Sebastian and they go to see this witch. I don't know who that is so if you have any idea what comic book character that could be related to let me know. And on top of it I feel like they're setting up something bad happening to either Rachel or Dick because Rachel talks about how black magic always has a cost which makes me feel like one of them is either going to get killed or pay the price some way. So I'm interested to seeing what happens there but again I feel like that plot wasn't really needed during the storyline and they could have easily cut it. To be fair it wasn't all bad the best part was the fact that Dick and Rachel went together and it kind of related back to season one where Dick found Rachel and that he's the one that brought her and he looked out for her so that's why she trusts him to help her and I just like the way they dealt with that a little bit and it just felt like something added to it unless they're setting up something in the future we'll see if there's a payoff in the end so like I said in the beginning this did feel like a setup for the net last two episodes because we are almost done the season so I'm curious to see what they do and how this show ends I do have a love-hate relationship with it but it still kind of sucks to see it go because I do like the Titans and I like all the actors playing their roles Trigon will probably be summoned next episode and we're also going to be getting Tim in his Robin suit and I I think it's gonna be interesting to see how the final fight plays out i'm hoping that we see some of the titans that we met in the earlier seasons. we know we're seeing jason again from the mid-season trailer i'm hoping we see donna again and i know this is a long shot but i'm also hoping that we see rose and jericho because i thought they would come back after season two with all deathstroke stuff i thought they would have came back at some point but we haven't seen them since it kind of sucked to have them come in and then go because they are part of the titans and it would have been great to see more of them the final episode is called titans forever so maybe we will see a couple more titans show up. what did you think of this episode were there any easter eggs that you noticed because i feel like there wasn't a lot in it how did you feel about the acting performances and do you want cyborg to join the titans i hope you enjoyed this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button it helps out the channel a lot and if you want to see my other breakdowns i do them for the flash superman and Lois, Doom Patrol, which will probably pick up after this, and Stargirl. So make sure you check out those, and they'll be linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.